what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again with your favorite handheld the Logitech G Cloud and today we're going to be testing out some emulation on this device. Now I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this are very familiar with this device. Yes it's definitely overpriced for the specs we have here and coming in with a price tag like this you'd be better off getting the Steam Deck but that doesn't change the fact that a lot of people are going to be picking this up or maybe have already pre-ordered it waiting on it to ship or just received it. So in this video, I want to see how it handles our favorite emulators. We're going to start off light and move all the way up to PS2, go with everything in between there. But uh, before we get started here, I do want to admit that I've actually been enjoying the design of this device and the feel. Logitech released this as a cloud streaming device, and with the CPU we have here coming in with a price tag of $350, I personally just don't think it's the right choice to pick something like this up when there's much better handhelds on the market, either for cheaper or just a little bit more with a lot more power. My launcher here might look a lot different from what you've seen on this device, and that's because we can actually run this in tablet mode or we can use their game mode, which they have their own launcher built in. I'm in tablet mode with one of my favorite launchers, known as the TV Launcher. This is the Pro version. We can totally customize it, change the background, and it does work with the built-in controls. Really easy to navigate. And personally, I just kind of like the way this setup looks over their stock launcher that they have built in. But yeah, I mean, this thing has a 1080p 7-inch IPS display. We've got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, a Snapdragon 720G, which is a few years old now as making this video in 2022. And as you can see, we've got just kind of that stock Android launcher there, but I'm using the TV launcher. So running it in kind of that stock Android mode, yeah, you can customize it a bit, but you know, that's about it. You can install a different launcher if you want to. Basically, we've got a lower powered Android tablet with some controls attached, but that's not going to stop me from running some of my favorite emulators on this device. And first up, we've got some Game Boy Advance, super easy to emulate. We knew it was going to run really well here. I'm using RetroArch with that MGBA core. And you know, when it comes to the easier to emulate stuff, you want to go with some PC Engine, NES, SNES, FBA, Neo Geo. You're not going to have any trouble with it, including PS1. Here's Bloody Roar 2, and I'm using Duck Station. I've upscaled this to 2x resolution with that core in RetroArch, and it's playing really well. I also wanted to throw some N64 in here, and this should perform just as well using a RetroArch core like Moopin, but what I'm using here is a standalone emulator known as Moopin 64 Plus FZ. You can get it from Google Play. But yeah, I mean, any N64 emulator should work really well on this device, even the harder to emulate stuff like 007 and Conker's Bad Fur Day. Another one I tested here was Sega Saturn with one of my go-to tests, Sega Rally. This does give lower end chips a run for its money, especially using the Yobase and Shiro core and Retro Arch. But as you can see here, it's running great, and you could go with the standalone version if you want to. Moving up a bit to Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator, and you know if you're into emulation, you know this emulator, it does work really well on low end chips, and I was able to upscale to 1080p, that was the max I tried, but we could probably go higher, but there's really no point given that we have a 1080p display here. And even Crazy Taxi 2 at 1080p performed great, so yeah, I mean, as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, you're not going to have an issue with it. And if you did want to use the Flycast core for some Naomi and a Thomas Wave, we do have more than enough power for that also. Taking a look at some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Really, there's only a couple we need to test here just to know what kind of performance this thing's going to put out. So first, I tested kind of an easier to emulate game. We've got Ratchet and Clank, Size Matters, 3x resolution, Vulcan back in, running great. Now this was locked at 30 FPS on the PSP, but there are hacks out there that we could go to 60 with it. I just didn't install anything. But you know, when it comes down to it, you gotta test out God of War. So here's Ghost of Sparta at 2x resolution. I actually originally went into this at 1x thinking I just need to leave it there. But as soon as I tested 2x and it worked this well, I just left it there. We're still using that Vulcan back in, and we're good to go with God of War. I also tested out Chains of Olympus, same kind of performance. 3DS is kind of a different story. It's really all over the place, and it's kind of really all over the place on even higher end chips. 
So I went through and tested the official version of Citra from Google Play. I also tested the enhanced version and I was basically getting the same kind of performance. I tried a few tweaks in both of the versions of Citra that I tested on this device. And yeah, I mean, really, we've just got a lower end chip. This does rely on OpenGL and hopefully they add Vulkan down the road. One thing that kind of impressed me was GameCube emulation. Now the Dolphin emulator has come a long way and especially with some of the new developments, OpenGL back in is the way to go on these Snapdragon chips and it looks like even these older chips can handle some of these games pretty well. And the version of Dolphin that I'm using here is the official version actually from the website. It's a development version. It's changing all the time. I also tried MMJR2 or MMJ2, whatever they're calling it now, and I got much worse performance in all of the games that I tested. Unfortunately, it's not going to run everything, so a harder to emulate game here is Automotilista. No matter what I did here, I tried OpenGL, Vulkan, tried some hacks, and I just couldn't get this game to run at full speed. Another one I tried was F-Zero GX, and we were only running at about 25 FPS, even on the easier to emulate tracks. But it does look like there's some easier to emulate games that will run on the Snapdragon 720G. And the final thing I tested here was some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2. So yeah, this is such a great emulator. It kind of just came out of nowhere and now it's kind of taken over the scene when it comes to, uh, you know, ARM-based PS2 emulation on Linux and Android. Here's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. We're at 1x resolution, Vulcan back in, and it's fully playable on this device. I also tested a couple 2D Shrumps and Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. Same kind of performance here. You can play those games on this device. I also went with some harder to emulate stuff just to see what this thing would do. And when it comes to something like Soul Calibur 3, this is kind of a no-go unless you're using hacks and then you've got a bunch of skipping going on. I mean, it's really up to you. You could get this to run at 30 FPS if you want to. But with all of those hacks on, it does have a bunch of frame skip going on. And personally, I just don't like it. I also tested one of my favorite PS2 games of all time, Gran Turismo 4 at 1x with that Vulcan back end. And I will admit there are some dips every once in a while, especially when you have a long draw distance kind of down the track there. But overall, it is a playable experience and I was kind of impressed that this little chip was able to handle this game. It's actually really fun playing this on a handheld and uh, I know we've got the new Gran Turismo. I've got it on PS5. Absolutely love it. I'm a huge fan of the Forza franchise. I just really love racing games and this was always one of my favorites so I personally like testing it out. But we've got one more here for PS2 and that's God of War 2. So even at 0.75x resolution uh, on the safe preset with no hacks running in the background using that Vulcan back end, we can't quite hit 60 with the Snapdragon 720G. And by the way, with everything that I tested, I'm at the safe preset with the Ether SX2 emulator. And like I mentioned, with Soul Calibur 3, we could turn a few hacks on. Sorry, this is like so blown out by this white screen in the background. But with those hacks enabled, it does feel a little more playable. I mean, we don't have those major dips, but there is a lot of frame skip going on. And this is something that has always bugged me, especially with the PSP emulator. But, you know, with PS2, I personally can feel it. I can see it. And this isn't how I want to play the game. But some people might be totally fine with this. I mean, if you own one of these devices and aren't planning on returning it, then yeah, you could probably get by playing these harder to emulate PS2 games with some hacks on. So yeah, the Logitech G Cloud is totally capable of running a lot of our favorite emulators at full speed, but you know, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying one of these at that $350 price tag. Now, this is actually the second video I've done on the Logitech G. The first one I mentioned, you know, that $350 price tag is way too high for what we have here, but if it was released two years ago with these same specs, everybody would have went crazy for something like this. But, you know, with all of the x86 handhelds on the market right now, and especially the Steam Deck, the base model coming in at $399, then, you know, this isn't a super good deal. And I completely understand that this wasn't brought to market to compete with the Steam Deck, but the comparisons are definitely going to be there, especially with the price tag of $350 on this thing. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I kind of just wanted to get this video out of the way. I had a lot of people asking about emulation on this thing. And since it's running Android, I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. If there's anything else you want to see running on this device, be it a native Android game, a native app, or some more cloud gaming, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.